Pisa is one of those cities that's close to Florence and an easy train ride from what I can see, so I thought I'd do some research on how to get there. And to get there, I jumped on the Train Italia website to get an idea how long the train ride will take and whether or not it's a direct trip without having to do transfers or changes, to, which can be stressful. With my search parameters set to departing Florence around 8 in the morning, as you can see, there's a few direct trains that uh, only take a little over an hour. To get an idea about the amount of trains returning to Florence, I stayed on the Train Italia website and hit the reverse of the original search and set my return time for around 3 in the afternoon. As you can see here, there's plenty of trains returning to Florence in, in the 3 and 4 o'clock hours. The train station is just outside the main city center uh, of the historic district, but when zooming in, the distance from the train station to the river is only about 0.6 miles or 15 minute walk, and then from the river to the, let's say, Leaning Tower of Pisa and the cathedral, it's another half mile, another 15 minute walk. I jumped on a website called saltinourhair.com and looked to see what they had listed as the best things to do in Pisa. This site, as well as a whole bunch of others, just highlight the tower. They barely even make mention of the cathedral or the baptistry, which is right there. They even mention the Square of Miracles, which is actually just the green grass that's around the cathedral and the tower. There's plenty of churches and they do highlight Santa Maria della Spina, which is uh, highlighted as a tiny church with a Gothic facade that is said to have once held one of the thorns from Jesus' crown of thorns. Now, the tourist websites say that uh, gelato is a way of life in Pisa, and I can imagine walking along the river eating a gelato sounds like a perfect way to spend the day. Shopping and strolling in the Borgo Stretto, which is the historic district, Finding a place for lunch away from the cathedral and the Leaning Tower is recommended since it's such a draw for tourists the prices will be high and most likely the quality will be low. Then there's the main square called the Knights Square that's surrounded by historic buildings. Unfortunately, none of the buildings are accessible to the public according to these websites. One comment uh, was that there is no place to sit or relax in the square at all and that tourists uh, websites also mention strolling along and watching the college students. The more I read about Pisa, the more I get a feeling that the city is just fine with its sole tourist highlight, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and it hasn't really done much else to draw tourists or keep tourists in the city. So I zoomed out on the map from Pisa and I saw the city Lucca. Now this is one of those medieval walled cities that's kept its Renaissance walls intact. It's exactly the kind of city that I love exploring. So I jumped on the Train Italia website to get an idea of how easy it would be to get to Lucca. And as you can see here, there's plenty of direct trains from Florence to Lucca. In the reverse route, there's plenty of trains departing Lucca and then returning to Florence in the afternoons. So this is an ideal day trip for what I like to do. To give you an idea how close everything is, it's only a 13 minute walk or about a half mile from the train station into the center part of the city. Jumping on the MyTravelInTuscany.com website, here's some of the things that they highlighted to see. The walls of Lucca, where you can climb up and walk on these tall uh, walls around the city. Only residents can access the inner city inside the walls, and there are four medieval gates that are left over from the Renaissance where people can enter the city by walking. The website also uh, talked about strolling and shopping in the historic center of Via Belungo. There's a piazza called Piazza Amphitheater, strangely enough, because it was actually built over the remains of an old Roman amphitheater. So it's kept its shape, and inside are cafes and restaurants and a perfect place to stop and have lunch. There's a 14th century cathedral called Duomo di San Martino. And then there's a 12th century basilica called the Church of San Michel. Piazza Napoleon is a large square with a monument to Napoleon's sister who resided in the Palazzo della Provincia, which is also in the square. There's also a palace called Palazzo Fanner, which uh, is very Baroque and has beautiful gardens. 
Like many cities in Italy, there's definitely a Roman history associated with this city. And there's archaeological sites in the center of town, as well as a Roman aqueduct that you can walk under or on top of that's just behind the rail station. Lucca is definitely one of those cities that I'm going to visit when I'm in Italy. It only takes an hour to get there, and it looks like a great place to stop and have lunch and relax.